What is going on everybody? My name is Jared and welcome to the Mad Props Boatwork channel. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you're going to try and figure out where the heck I am. But it is time to start the rebuilding process. I decided I'm going to start a kind of a mini series here on servicing Mercruiser Outdrive. This first one here is going to be on how to replace your gimbal bearing. It's surprisingly easy. So for those of you that have not, never done it before, you're going to want to check this one out. It's a pretty quick job. Honestly, the worst part is just getting the drive off and even that it's only a 15 minute thing. So I'm going to kind of skip over that part in this, in this series because the drive's already off, but you can check out either the manual or other YouTube videos on how to get the drive off. Um, Chris from my boats has a good one on removing and installing the drive. So without uh, any more hesitation, let me give you an overview here of the tools that you're going to need. So the main thing you're going to need here, and there's probably other ways to do it, but this is by far the easiest, is a slide hammer. Now I don't own a slide hammer because this is pretty much the only case I ever use one. So I just go to my local auto parts store and rent this. It's kind of expensive to rent, but when you're done, you take it back and get all your money back. If you recall in my U-Joints video, I rented the U-Joint service kit from them too. It's your local auto parts tool rental is a great thing to have available to you, so use it. So we got our slide hammer. It comes with other attachments, but for this, I use this cup and the three jaw holder and the jaws on this are facing outward, not inward like you would typically see. Um, so slide hammer and then, so that's basically all we need to get the gimbal bearing out. Next is a bearing install tool. This one I happened to make myself today on the lathe over there, um, but you can buy these. And what this does is goes on this tool, which every Mercruiser boat owner should have. No excuses, they're not that expensive on eBay. So what this does is this slides over the alignment tool like that, and we use this to hammer on the new gimbal bearing. And I'll show you why it's important to use this in a minute. I actually have my gimbal bearing in the freezer right now to try and get it to shrink a little bit. So that's a trick if you guys have never heard of before, if you're installing a bearing, if you put it in the freezer, it'll actually shrink down in size. So this is where your gimbal bearing goes and this whole outer ring is gonna be removed. So we're pushing in that new one. We need all the help we can get. So we put it in the freezer and it'll shrink down just a little bit in size. So it makes it easier to get in. Okay, so we got our slide hammer, our bearing install tool, the alignment tool. Um, and we have some uh, persuasion here in the form of a light sledgehammer. We're going to use that to hit on the end of the install tool to drive the new bearing in. Now, parts I have here that you probably aren't going to be doing, but I am, is the uh, shaft seal, which is actually back behind the gimbal bearing in there. So once I take my gimbal bearing out, I'm also going to be pulling that seal and replacing it. Um, this is not part of a normal gimbal bearing service, but I'm going to do it because I'm rebuilding everything anyway. So. Um, so that's pretty much it there. So let me get you guys set up and let's get this old one out. So with these jaws here on this attachment, it's a little finicky to get them in there, but you just kind of grab them all together and kind of feed it in through the opening of the bearing. And then we'll spin this cup tool down. And what that does is it forces them out so it will <clears throat> grab onto the inside race. All right, so I got the jaws sort of in there. They're being a little stubborn, but this will work. So at this point, you're just kind of brute force. So you slide this in, and just wrap on it. It's gonna sound like you're breaking your boat, but I promise you, you're good. That's it. Okay. So when this comes out, that's why I had a towel here because nine times out of 10, it comes out with a whole lot of grease. So you just want to clean that up so you don't get it all over you. 
And at this point, let's uh, loosen this cup off. There we go. Okay, now I mean, after that we're done with the slide hammer, so. You don't need it for much, but you do need it. Now this gimbal bearing I removed is a greasable type, I believe. Um, and there's a way to check that. So since this one is trash, the quickest way is just going to be for me to remove this outer clip. Yep. So that hole right there, that is the grease port to the bearing. And it's critical if you have a greased bearing that that gets lined up properly when you reinstall. So let me set this down and I'll show you what I mean. So there's a grease port on your transom assembly right here. So just for reference, that's where I'm at. Right there. And if you look inside the casting, that's actually what this is here. So that's that grease port coming up through the casting into the gimbal housing. And you can't really see it, but right back in there, there's a little hole. So when you pump grease in here, it's going in that hole. And that has to line up with that hole on the gimbal bearing. Now. A lot of people are replacing their gimbal bearings now with sealed gimbal bearings, which don't get greased, myself included. That's what I'll be installing, so if yours is greased, just be aware of that. You need to line that up. So at this point, you just want to go in and clean this up, get all the old grease out, and as well as, in my case, I'll be removing the seal to replace that. Um, but uh, I'll put you on pause here while I just clean this up and then we'll show you the reassembly process. All right, so it is actually the next night. I kind of got interrupted last night with a uh, little bit of an emergency, so I had to stop in my tracks, but it's actually a good thing because I ended up realizing that I needed a special, well, not a special tool, but I needed something to punch the new seal in. I didn't have a socket big enough, so I ended up actually measuring everything in the Oddly enough, the closest thing I found was a coupler for two and a half, no, two inch black iron pipe, Schedule 40. It was pretty close to the right outside diameter. So I ended up getting that, a piece of two inch pipe nipple and a cap for something to hammer on. Install time. Now this is relatively straightforward, but I highly, highly recommend that you have a bearing install tool. Um, it can be done with a brass punch or drift or something like that, but you risk the possibility of damaging it if you hit it in the wrong area or you slip or anything like that. So I have my bearing here. It's been sitting in the freezer overnight. It doesn't need to be that long. They cool down pretty quick. Just again, got sidetracked yesterday. So this thing is freezing cold. You want to do this as quick as you can so it doesn't come up to room temperature, but so there's a, uh, orientation to this gimbal bearing. One key is the, the dot is always facing towards the transom. Another one is these two kind of slots you can see here face towards the bow of the boat. So if your gimbal bearing is sealed, again, you want to locate that port for the grease inside of there. You need to orient this outer ring over top of that port and make sure it's facing the grease port in the uh, transom assembly. In my case, this is a sealed bearing, so that does not matter. So I'm just going to get this up here. Actually, give us a quick kind of coat of some 3-in-1 oil, just kind of help it along. Now, the biggest bit of advice I can give you is the more persuasion you can get, the better this is going to go. Once you get it started, just take your tools out and make sure it's going in relatively straight because if it's not, it's going to be a lot harder and I can already tell that the bottom's in a little bit more, so just kind of make your adjustments.
All right, so it's pretty well squared up at this point. So at this point, it's just kind of brute force. If you're trying to do this with like a small framing hammer or something, it's gonna seem impossible. So get something with some weight. One more good for good luck. Yeah, that's solid. Cool. All right, guys. So after you get that in there, just make sure the inside race is still turning freely. Make sure you didn't damage anything. I don't think there's any significance to the location of that dot. I think it's more just so you know which side goes to the transom. Not a breath. But that is it guys, it's that easy. Rent the slide hammer, makes getting the old one out a piece of cake. Throw the new one in the freezer before you do this, give it a little coat of oil. Don't use grease, grease is too thick. It'll actually kind of add friction to this process. If you have a greasable bearing, grease it after it's in. So, oh, that brings up a point. Um, I won't show you this because it'll, it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you, <clears throat> if you buy a non-greasable U-joint, and you took out a greasable one and you still have the grease fitting over here on the tra <coughs> transom assembly most of the sealed bearings will come with a plug so you can take out this grease zerk and put a plug in so you know or anybody down the road knows you don't need to grease that because if you leave the grease zerk in and you don't know and you shoot grease in there it'll just build up a lot of pressure and you could actually potentially crack the transom housing with too much pressure from the grease gun so just make sure you do that, and if you have a greasable U-joint, make sure you grease it now. And what you want to do is grease it until you start to see it squeezing out the whole way around the bearing assembly there. But that is going to wrap this one up, guys. So again, that is how you replace your U-joint. It's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this, and uh, check out my other videos. And uh, we'll see you on the next one where we continue on the transom assembly. See ya.